Hey guys, and thank you for listening to the Respect the Man podcast. I'm your host, Teresa Young, and today I want to introduce you to my special guest, Jonathan Rios. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, good to be with you. Stoked. (laughs) It's so great to have you. For those of you who don't know him yet, Jonathan is an athlete turned mental coach and licensed psychotherapist who is deeply committed to remaining undomesticated. (laughs) Oh, I can't wait to talk about that with the audience today. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to be here. This will be fun. Mm -hmm, For sure. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm just so blessed to have you here today and that you took the time to join us. I know our listeners are going to take away a lot of um, good nuggets that you're going to share with them today. Um, let's talk a little bit about undomesticated (laughs) because when I, we're going to piss a lot of women off, but we're going to make a lot of men happy. I'm sure in this show, but if you actually listen to the end, as we start to unravel what this word means, you guys, both men and women will have great appreciation. I'm sure for this conversation, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Fire away. I'm ready. All right, let's go, let's go. So I love to open with, um, you know, some quotes that mean some awesome things to me and they're deep and I just love to share them with the audience. So I want to share a quote with you guys today and um, I want to see what Jonathan thinks about this. So it is, society tames the wolf into a dog and man is the most domesticated animal of all. Ooh. What? A, yeah. That's awesome. What does that I'm mean to that. you? Well, um, Let's let's start by framing this idea of, of domestication versus undomesticated. So, uh, I work with a lot of men. I'd say eighty percent of the men, or eighty percent of my clientele, are men. The other twenty percent mm-hmm. are families and wives. Uh, and what I what I chronically see, and I've experienced this on a personal level as well, are men that have gone soft or overtly feminized. And so, I have some theories about that. But what I mean by when I say domesticated, I want you to consider we live in a funny time. So because of modernity, modern luxuries, uh, we now drive around in climate-controlled chariots we call cars. We work in climate-controlled offices. We live in climate-controlled houses. I think the average American spends a roughly average of about 11 hours a day connected to some form of screen or LED screen. Um, we have these machines in our pockets that answer our every beck and call, right? We, we can push a button, order groceries to our front door, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and these combine, uh, this excessive abundance, excessive access to luxury and ease, it produces something called decadence, all right? And if you look that word up, decadence basically means systemic, moral, physical, and social decay. So like in your mind, think about, if you just feed your kid cotton candy every day, what what ends up decaying? Mm-hmm. Are you saying They're, that we're we're now spoiled cavemen? <laughs> uh, that's absolutely what I'm saying. It doesn't it doesn't mean life doesn't have hard moments and seasons. It just means compared to most of human history, we live like kings. And mm-hmm. the pro- the problem therein is because of the excessive abundance, and we excessively indulge. That's half the problem. It, it produces softness, decay, to where we're, yeah, I don't know if you know this, we are literally the most obese culture that's ever existed. Like obesity has now trumped world hunger. Wow. There's more, peop- there's more people wrestling with obesity than the medical complications, like, sorry, the medical complications of obesity versus true hunger. And mm-hmm. beyond that, we're the most heavily medicated culture that's ever existed. And I'm in the medical mm-hmm. profession. So all of that, produces domesticated, uh, obese, fat, depressed uh, men and women. But for the men, the effect it has, it it sucks the fight right out of them. Mm -hmm. Makes them soft and pudgy, right? Uh, Not hard, hard times actually end up in the the end, they end up producing strong men. We'll get to that. But that's the premise Mm -hmm. is I do believe, uh, yeah, I believe we are in living in some luxurious times. Now, some of us, it's hard for us to realize this if you're American, but most of us as Americans, we're in the like top one to 5% richest people in all the world. But because we're in that pocket, we don't, all we know is we can compare with our neighbors, but it's a, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother way of mm-hmm. viewing things. Mm-hmm. So does that make sense? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. It almost makes um, people where their anxiety is really high, anger's on the rise, they're depressed, they're unable to be grateful for the things they have in their life. I see it all the time. And as we're going into the next few months, it is uh, mental health awareness, uh, suicide awareness. Like, why are we at that point in our culture? We have to raise awareness of mental health, like keeping yourself mentally healthy and suicide. Mm-hmm. I mean, the numbers are astounding right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, uh, if you, if you put, uh, the suicide stats out in front, I think something like 63% of youth suicides are, they correlate with fatherless homes. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the mm-hmm. reasons, and we can get into this a little bit if, if you want to, but I think one of the reasons men are so soft these days and overtly feminized is because we're living in the most fatherless generation that's ever existed. So if you look at more of the stats, 85% of male prisoners come from fatherless homes. Uh, 85% of youth diagnosed with behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. Mm -hmm. To transpose that with women, girls are seven times more likely to be impregnated outside Mm -hmm. of wedlock if they come from fatherless homes. The stats just, they're just crazy. There's so many of them. But so that's one, that's one variable, I believe that's affecting current men. Um, another one, this is, this might interest you, Teresa. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of people posit around the, the time of the industrial revolution, um, men left the home and they went off to work in factories and they got into machinery. And so men are away for most of the day. And so the children are being raised by mom and school teachers. And I think it's something like 90% of elementary age school teachers are female. So the boys are no longer being mentored, coached, raised by dad and men, they're being raised by females. And so a lot of people posit that that effect, that's another variable affecting modern men. Okay. Um, And I would propose this, that masculinity is, it's kind of taught, but it's also caught. Mm -hmm. There's some teaching involved, some mentoring, but there's also some observational learning. And because we're a fatherless generation, most of us don't have dad we have a real dad problem either dad was in the home but he was distant or dad just wasn't in the home at all and so men are left to go i don't really know how to do this 